Protectorate would like to remind you that although the Traveler has bestowed upon us tremendous bounties of food and prosperity, there are an unfortunate few in our solar system that go cold and hungry every day of each cycle. The lost children of our own European colony are but one example of citizens in need of support throughout our solar system. And if it were not for programs like Lord Garrett's research facility, these children would not have a home to go to. The Traveler has given us more than we could have ever dreamed possible, and at the close of this cycle, we ask that you bring some of that joy to the few citizens who are just outside the Traveler's reach. Also, although Turkey does contain tryptophan, be aware that it is not at an abnormally higher level than in any other meat. The onset of tiredness after celebratory meals is in fact due to the overconsumption of carbohydrates which results in an increase in production of the sleep-promoting chemical melatonin in the brain. Practicing warlocks take heed. Your ability to emit powerful auras and your ability to heal may be diminished if you eat too much. Titans, known for their eating prowess, should be fine. So eat away, you titan fatties. Public memory access, 20. Citizens, remember this date, next cycle, the 9th of September. This date has been scattered throughout the known solar system via an unknown but familiar source. It is of the utmost importance. The gathering of human individuals around something called destiny appears to be growing, and this date marks the time when destiny will be unveiled. One key interview has surfaced with an individual named Jason Jones, and he has been quoted making several remarks about the Traveler's past, recalling what is familiar to anyone who has read a children's Tower Academy textbook. Mr. Jones tells the familiar tale of the Traveler coming to our solar system long ago, bestowing us with its power, and settling for some time on Mars. The alien forces, enemies of the Traveler, eventually caught up with it, and brought about the collapse. The collapse. The, the collapse. Humanity was pushed back from the solar system. Their only remaining stronghold is the city. Underneath the traveler. Oh, no, no, no. I remember none of this. No, I do not remember none of this. Nothing. No. I remember nothing. No. Collapse. There was no collapse. Sam. Sam. End public memory access. 20. Private memory access. 0 0.10. Happy holidays, Sam. Although I do not fully understand our current predicament, your recovery of artifacts is proving quite useful at reconstructing all of our lost time. I see that after your recent trip, your memory buffers are completely full. It is as if you have felt the spirit of the holiday season and are bringing a large sack of gifts for me to unpack. Well, fine. I cannot wait to hear them. Please play back. All right, what, what do I talk into? Just, just this right here. All right. Well, what do I? I mean, what do I say? Just, just my name. All right. 
This is Jonathan Kim. I can't do this. This is ridiculous. My name is Jonathan Camden, and this is my audio log number one. I mean, who, who am I talking to as I'm doing this? Who am I talking to as... Oh, oh, yeah? 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 Well, you can go to hell. I can tell you what you can... My name is Jonathan Camden, and this is my audio log number one. This is uh, something that the, the coats say that I need to do to help me with my therapy. That's what they say. <laughs> therapy. Yeah, who needs therapy? The only therapy I needed... Yeah, failed a few weeks ago when somebody revived me. After I put those gashes in my wrist. Now that, that would have been some therapy right there. But just reliving those thoughts, the thoughts of you while lying there in that pool of blood, that's, that's just something I, I can't ever experience again. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this because they, they say I need to talk to you. Tell you how I feel and... Let out my feelings. Well, seems kind of odd doing that, if you ask me. I mean, my life as a titan was always centered around protecting others while sacrificing my own life. Protect the lives of others, sacrifice my life. <laughs> That's the life of a titan. It's crazy how life works like that, right? I mean, after all these years, I was willing to do something so selfish to take my life and just find an easy way out. Easy way out from what is what everybody keeps asking me. They're like, why, why would you do that? What were you trying to get away from? That's pretty obvious if you ask me. It was pain over you, Jess. <laughs> Jess. <laughs> well, that's, that's the first time I've said your name in months. Yeah. Um, Jess. Oh, Jess. I'm so, so sorry. Just saying your name hurts. I'm so sorry. Dusty Franklin here from Dusty Franklin's Exchange, ladies and gentlemen, and I've lost my mind. Everything in the store is 24% off. What was I thinking? 24% off? Would I lie? No, never. Perfectly proportioned, ready-to-eat meals? 24% off. Big sale! Your great-great-great-great-grandfather's motor vehicle replicas from the old age? That's right, 24% off. Big sale! The newest season of... I found love beyond the event horizon <sighs> is 24% big, off big sale so before my accountant slaps some sense into me come down to Dusty Franklin's exchange to get everything 24% off can't give enough my Dusty Franklin's Marcus Whiteside's personal log fourth cycle of December 20th golden age Lord Garrett by extension Solcom is quickly shifting from irritating to a true thorn in my side. This supposed school of his is now taking some of the best and brightest away from actual promising futures at companies like Traxxas and thrusting them instead headlong into a hopeless void. Yes, there have been successes with some of the subjects, but the percentage is so low it's not even worth speaking of. And what of the rest? To say they are damaged does not do justice to most cases. Indeed, some number are now dead. What is still only rumors to the public I now know is truth, and that truth is deeper and darker than any rumor I've yet heard. Though Strauss's records of the activities on Europa are by no means complete, they have all the clarity I need for a true picture. Garrett is becoming a monster. And for what? I cannot reveal these truths, of course, nor publicly. Leaking the fact that I have access to Strauss at all would do irreparable damage to my company, what with the CEO being involved in acquiring information through means that are not exactly legal. 
My best course with the media is probably to spin him and his company both as profit-hungry and uncaring, and use all Traxxas's leverage to try to shut him down financially. It may prove effective, but it's not even a shadow of the true darkness. End personal Lord Gerrit Personal Log. Sixth cycle of November. The 21st Golden Age. Whilst this log holds no financial importance, and does not document anything of significance towards humanity's cosmic destiny, the incredible vision that I have in my mind, it is still important to me. This very log will detail, well, the three people that I find most important in my life. Of course that used to be four people, but I don't like to talk about Marcus anymore. Whitesides is... Ugh. The man was too practical. He never understood that when somebody sometimes reaches for their vision, it can seem illogical. And yet, you must do it anyway. You must trust blindly. But enough of this. There are three individuals that, in my life, I can truly trust. I have no family, except for one, who I uh, will talk of in a few moments. And then there is Strauss. Strauss, of course, the AI that tracks his supercomputer that I had Virginia acquire for me. He sorts through all my data and he makes everything that I wish to accomplish possible. Not having Strauss is a terrifying idea, although he is obnoxious. Occasionally he likes to point out flaws in data and then attempts to prove me wrong. Sometimes I wish I could install some form of subroutine in his programming that would allow me to always be right, but at the same time I know it's important that I get things wrong. Because he is, well, a robot. He is an automaton. He is perfect in that particular regard and he cannot make mistakes. That's why I have him around. Because if I did not have someone to correct my mistakes, what would I be? Then, of course, there is Virginia. Need I say more? She has been the focus of all my love. The one person who I have always, always treasured above everything else. It's so strange to think that my professional career started so long ago and I've known her for so long and yet our relationship has only blossomed in, well, a fraction of the time we've known each other. <laughs> she was young. She was young and scared, but she was ambitious. And that ambition is something I told her to utilize, to unlock, to truly allow her to progress. At the time being, she was a bit of a drifter. And so was I for a small amount of time. If it wasn't for the one dream that I had, <laughs> as a boy that I remembered as a CEO, the vision that I had of crossing the stars, leaving this solar system behind with a fleet of ships at my back, that young boy's dream now founds the career and even the very actions now of this man. Something incredible to think about, really. I think Virginia sort of took this vision and wanted to run with it. Wanted to make it her own, but knew that it was mine. She was so wrapped up, and in the end, she fell in love with the vision and, as a result, fell in love with me. And I loved her for her ambition. She felt like the only one who could truly understand that this was possible. She was an anthropologist student, and it was incredible to see. She knew more about the human psyche than I had ever known about. She knew more about human interaction as well. Something I severely lacked. These audio logs are not meant to extend past 300 seconds but I will extend it for another few. Whilst I can't talk about him in this particular log, I will find more time to talk about my brother. Tarsonis Garrett is a man, and still in some ways a boy, that should be respected in many ways more than any other human being on the planet. He is the very embodiment of pragmatism. 
and one day I feel he has the potential to take up my mantle. But only time will tell. And until then, I have darker matters to attend to. End. You've reached John and Jess. We can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. Jess, it's Dad. Pick up. Pick up if you're there. Oh, please be there. Please be there. Look, I know I should have been there, but something's happening, and you need to listen to me. If you can hear this, get to the basement. I, I don't know what they are, but there are ships coming in, and they're headed your way. Oh, my God, I can see fire, Jess. Just please pick up the phone. Pick up. Just just stay there. I'll be there. I, I know I say that all the time, but I, I mean it. I'll be there. I'm on my way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is was bad. End private memory access zero point one zero. Private memory access minus sixty one point six. You find yourself thinking about the passage of time, how you experience it, how I experience it. How does any living entity's experience affect time? After careful consideration, you have proposed that the passage of time is only as fast or as slow as an entity is capable of conceiving of it. My feelings about time, therefore, are limited to the number of thoughts that you can have in any given time interval. If I am on a moving train and drop a ball out of a window, I see the ball move straight down. But to you, watching the train nearby, the ball falls in a parabolic path. Which of these really happened? What is the true reality? The answer is, perhaps unsatisfyingly to me, Virginia, and Garrett, both. Time works in the same way. And in this relative sense, traveling through time is certainly possible. But I lack the technology to do so. But it is not for any fault of my own, put quite plainly. It is beyond the physical constraints defined by our particular world line within the Minkowski space-time metric of our local solar system. Other life forms, however, who evolved elsewhere in our galaxy may not be limited by the nuances of our particular pocket of space-time. This is perhaps the only real way to fulfill my dream. And in the 23rd scan, in the 56th minute, of the 77,777th repetition, I have made contact. End private memory access, minus 61.6. File found! Solcom news bumper restored. Playback, initializing. This is Strauss, thanking you for choosing Solcom as your source of news and information in the solar system. Remember, from the ice mines of Pluto to the solar research facilities of Mercury, I, Strauss, will be here for you to provide the information that matters most. Ghost and Echoes is a production of the Guardians of Destiny. It is written and produced by Craig Hardgrove. The voice of Strauss is Craig Hardgrove. Lord Garrett is voiced by James Byford, Marcus Whitesides by Ryan Kiesauer, Jonathan Camden by Mark Turcotte, and Dusty Franklin by Patrick Watts. For all of the episodes, please check out astromterra.com slash thisisstrauss, or search Guardian Radio on iTunes. For comments, questions, or to contribute, please contact us on Twitter at Guardians of D, or email us at feedback at guardiansofdestiny.com. You can also listen to the Guardian Radio podcast weekly on iTunes for great discussions on all things Destiny. This episode's message from Strauss has been decrypted. Mother Nature doesn't clean dishes, so why should you?